hell if I ask. Have you considered covering Power Wolf? I can almost hear a reverent of rats in your voice. Um, how can we help you defeat Gary? You <laughs> hey, make fake accounts. Subscribe. To- <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yeah. Recently, recently, I gave Power Wolf another chance because I was uh, I was never a huge fan. I loved the instrumental, but I was I was never big on the vocals. But recently, I I gave it another chance, uh, and yeah, I. I can I see myself digging it more. I just have to to get used to it because I'm uh, uh, I worry a lot about the quality of my vocals, so that makes me very uh, stingy w- with vocals. But yeah, I can I can see myself digging it. I was doing some research on on, on a studio that I plan to to work with, which is Fascination Street Studios from. Uh, Sweden, they're from Sweden. What's up with yeah. those those northern countries like Sweden, Norway, and Finland? The they have like uh, one metal band for every five citizens. Yeah, well, it's stuff like that. I was I was talking to Gus G on my show recently, and he said there is a there is one studio, and it's like in Gothenburg or something. I need to look it up. And he said, and I went and Googled it, and the dude that runs the studio has produced like every metal album that I like that I enjoy there's like hundreds there you go yeah it it happens all the time so I was doing research on that studio fascination street studios and it was pretty much like that oh they they produce this and this and that so and and power wolf that specific power wolf album that I forgot the name uh was one of those productions and I enjoyed it quite a lot so I can definitely see myself giving power Wolf a another chance real quick this is my alt channel and my main channel is in danger every day of getting banned as a result of talking with these amazing people very candidly so please do me a favor and subscribe down below helps me out a lot get the hell on it doggone yeah dude i get um speaking of music i always do i'll get real like inspired and so i wrote a song the other day i wrote the bass the guitar I got the drum track down. I had I, I, I started doing like synth with MIDI controllers. I got a real nice MIDI set up, and I have a like a Dude, digital grand piano as well. MIDI MIDI is like a, a, a there's no coming back. Yeah, from it's from, from, from the rabbit hole. Dude, of the I, MIDI. I literally so I have like an AK. I have a a AKG or AG key K. It's like a huge, goofy ass um, MIDI controller, and I like downloaded a Serum, like bought it, and downloaded it, and went to the first preset, which was this, this weird, I forget what it's called, um, a arpeggiator or oscillator mm-hmm. or something, and I just like pressed like some kind of uh, like octave key, and it was just like, and I was like, well, this is yeah. great. Like, and it was the first thing. So the it, first preset. And yeah. it already did the, the, you you have the ideas coming to your head yeah. already. And then you hit the second preset. It's like, what more ideas? Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's uh it, it, there's no coming back from that rabbit hole. My yeah. thing with MIDI is more orchestral instruments. I just yeah. love downloading orchestral VSTs yeah. and digital choirs. I, yeah. I'm working with a digital choir for for a song I'm working in from uh it's called Oce- Oceania, Oceani, Oce- Oceania. I think is how I know what you're it. talking about because I had a, I actually had a orchestral VST for a long time on my. Uh, th- this one is choirs. It's oh. like they the, those choirs actually say words. Yeah, with, uh, random words when you do the chord. It's so like it just looks like the real thing. I have a real choir at the tip of my fingers. It's insane. Mm. Yeah, I need that. I need that bad. That's I was awesome. told, I was working on this song and it's completely different style than I'm used to. And it's like really dark and goofy and like bouncy. And uh, I want like dance drums on it, but I also want like blast beats in it. There's all if this. You stuff. To, if you had to categorize it in one style, what would, what would be close? Oh my the closest God. To it? I don't even know. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, man. I don't even know what it would be called. It's 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 like dance metalcore. It's like the weird dance uh, metalcore. Yeah, it's like strange. It's a uh, it sounds awesome. It's like there's this band called Beast in Black. If you if I yes, didn't do power I, chords, I love them. If I remove the power chords and I'm playing on like a seven string and drop A, that's kind of like how it is. Okay. So it's a uh, 
It's kind of like that. Um, and that's that's what I'm going for, kind of. But I also wrote this other song that I sent to Gus G that is straight up power metal. Oh, uh, now you're talking. Now you're yeah, talking my thing, yeah. man. I'll I'll send it to you. Um, it, it's awesome. It, it's pretty wicked, but it's it's all over the place and it's like seven minutes long. And I'm like, why'd I do this? That's um, amazing. Yeah, and I, uh, I I didn't finish. I didn't do any of the lead guitar parts, but I finished everything else. And I didn't do any of the synth parts because I was in the middle of moving when I wrote it. Um, and I just now came back to it. But then I wrote this other song. But then I get this like block where I, I'll write it and then I don't want to finish it because I just can't like bring myself to finish it. It's really strange. I know how it is. Yeah, I have that problem sometimes too. I, ha I have a super easy time to starting stuff, starting songs. But yeah. then it's like... It works so much on a, on a song that you cannot stand to hear it anymore. And yeah. just don't, you just don't finish it. You think it t sounds bad. I'm like, this actually sounds terrible. Like, Because <laughs> yeah. you hear it like 9,000 times. I played the same freaking opening riff like 1,000 times when I was trying to record some stuff. And now it doesn't sound good to me anymore. I'm like, oh, this is, sounds gross. I don't want this. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, that, that, that happens to me uh, recording vocals sometimes. Sometimes it's better go with the first take that you did, like with a little, a, a, it's a little bit faulty in some ways, but it was the first time you hit it and you, you, you got all your heart. But then you, the second time you record it, it has like 90% of heart. And then the third yeah. time, 80% of heart. And then, by the one hundredth time, it's just loud. It's, it just sounds like a robot, even yeah. though it may sound perfect technically, but it doesn't have any feeling anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how it is. And yeah. uh, I need to, I need, I need to really get on to it, get on it, dogging on it. But I'm just, I'm just bad at it, and I have so many ideas, and then I never execute them. So that's and you. Do, you do your own mixes. Yeah. Um, now, I, yeah. I, if you heard my first mix versus my most recent mix, it's night and day, but it, I still feel like it's uh, trash. Yo, we, no. Yeah, this, we all been there. And so like, I'm, I'm starting to be more open to outsourcing my mixes. That's why I'm researching different studios and stuff like that, because it consumes so much of you, because you already have sort of an attachment to, to the work because you made yeah. it in the first place so your mix might reflect some things that it shouldn't reflect be because someone else approaching it with a clear mind and, and not not being any way shape or form attached to it will have a much better uh approach technical approach yeah to it. yeah and you know unbiased because I mean? i'm always trying unbiased, to be biased yes. yeah i'm trying to mix the guitars louder because guitar is my per my preferred instrument so I'm mixing the guitars louder and then you'll hear, I'll send it to, I remember I used to have a vocalist and I would send my mix to the vocalist or my, my stems to the vocalist and they would make the vocals so loud. And I'm yeah, like, my vocals are so loud, man. I can't hear anything else. The, like, Dude. Yes. My first mixes in my channel, the vocals are super loud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like, some people grow used to that. And now when I mix it in, in actual regular levels, like, Oh, the vocals too, it's too low. It's yeah. like but some some people some people come to the to my channel like only only for Dan, not necessarily for the whole work for 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 the whole song. I just want to hear Dan, and it's like no, I'm I'm just part of it. I'm just yep. one of the elements then of the metal or orchestra that you're hearing. Yeah, it's good too. You did, you did. What did you do? You did. Uh, Rosanna by Toto. Oh, dude. that that's an old one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, dude, because it's my that's my favorite song on on piano to just jam out to. Really? I love the piano, dude. Like, God, I love Let's it. make a metal version. Yeah, dude. Dude, I'm all about it. I love I love the piano. It's my favorite. One of my favorite things in piano. It just that you can play it really heavy, like really heavy handed, and it just uh -huh. just oh, it's awesome. I love that song. Um, I love most of the most of uh. Uh, Toto stuff. Toto, a lot yeah. of great because you don't realize it until you listen to like their greatest hits, and you're like, "Wow, I can't believe all these songs that I love. I didn't even know they were Toto." We all know Africa, yeah. is, but mm -hmm. <laughs> but anything else like Rosanna, God, what a great song! Yeah, I yeah. definitely have three Toto metal metal arrangements in my head that yeah. I just need to to I just need to bring it to the real world, which is uh, Africa, Rosanna. And I'm blanking on the third one. I'll I'll remember later as we yeah. as we talk. But yeah, 